everybody and welcome back to the Chan Chan. In today's video, we are taking a look at a super weird and unique line of toys from the 80s. Now, you all know I love my toys, love my super weird toys, and I love science. So uh, these toys are definitely up my alley. That's what she said. And that is germs. So I actually couldn't find a original commercial from this germs line from the 80s. So uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to make my own. Hey kids, do you like toys that don't move? Yeah! Just sit there and don't do nothing. Yeah! Do you like pretty colors? I guess so. Germs by Worlds of Wonder. Germs were first released in 1988 by Worlds of Wonder, the same people that brought us such things as Teddy Ruxpin and Laser Tag. The 80s saw the rise of the gross out toys, so these guys fit right in there, all cozy and cuddly. There were 12 different germs in total, each sold in these blister card packs. They were solid but squishy rubbery figures that were very colorful with unique appendages and shapes encapsulated by test tubes. There were two varieties of these test tubes. These round bottom test tubes and a second variety that was actually a flat bottom test tube and it looked to be made of a much more cheaper material. The figures had no articulation features, no sound features, no light up, no nothing, and they could only stand upright with the help of their test tube which had a stopper on the bottom that allowed the tube to stand upright. <sighs> Man, that is so toxic smelling. I don't think that was a good idea. I don't think that was a good idea at all. And once you open one of these, it is kind of hard to get, you know, that stopper back on there because the air pressure inside just really wants that stopper to come out. Each germ also came with its own lab report, which we will go over individually in just a minute, but each germ represented a different ailment or condition that generally had nothing to do with a germ, you know, like having the hiccups or laughing. So these lab reports are a bit uh, ridiculous. They're kind of much too long in my opinion. They're kind of painstakingly long, um, but they are generally broken up each into three paragraphs. The first one being an introduction to the germ, uh, its behavior or habitat. The second one is current research and some facts from research institutions or doctors regarding this particular germ. And the third paragraph is uh, specific accounts uh, from people that have experienced this ailment or condition or the germ. Well, these germs can't really, you know, do anything but just sit there. There's no real action features on this. There's no real playability. So uh, they just kind of sit there. Not to mention they have some really, really weird names that are very hard to pronounce. Uh, like uh, Uchi Achi Tickle Orum. Apparently, these germs also topped the most dangerous toys list one year due to the fact that these test tubes were actually able to shatter into super sharp pieces, which were obviously a hazard to children. Uh, not to mention when I opened up one of these uh, one of these guys, it smelled absolutely toxic in there. So who knows what kind of toxic fumes are being housed in these little vials. So let's quickly read through each germ individually. I will try to go as fast as I possibly can, uh, just so every germ has his, uh, his or her moment in the spotlight. I believe that these are all male. I think they all kind of are male germs. I don't think there's any female germs in here. Muggy Wumpyosis, commonly known as Smelly Feet, is a gross little dude who never takes a bath. If you think he never visits you, you just stick your nose inside your sneakers at the end of the day. Take five very deep breaths and if your nose wrinkles up, your eyes begin to water and your mouth says, phew, you've got smelly feet. You can sometimes coax the little creep out by leaving some garlic bubble gum near your sneakers overnight. It's his favorite flavor. But soap and water is usually faster. In fact, according to the Academy of Concerned Nose Pinchers, uh, just the mention of soap makes muggy wumpiosis shake in his stinky little boots. A guy named Greg from Flint, Michigan had a stuffy nose and didn't know a muggy wumpiosis had moved into the pile of dirty socks at the bottom of his gym locker until the day his whole basketball team fainted. By that time, it was too late to save Greg's socks, but quick thinking on the part of the Flint Fire Department rescued the locker with a severe soaping and hosing down, followed by nine coats of paint. Oh my god, this is so painful to read. Next up, sweaty stinkyosis. Oh my god, do we just do like something like that? Sweaty stinkyosis, commonly known as body odor or BO, is the crazy little twerp who sweats a lot while spinning in circles. Sometimes though, if uh, uh if we really purpose my 
I can't read these anymore. I'm so sorry. I will just read what the germ is. And then I'm just gonna read like the personal account. Okay, so this one, Sweaty Stinky Osis. So twins Arnold and Arlene from Arbuckle, Alabama caught such a bad case of sweaty stinky osis while bicycling to their grandpa's house that they had to put sardines in their armpits while eating their cookies and milk to chase away the B.O. germ. The fish weren't very happy with the solution, but their grandpa was greatly relieved. Hapa Hikasilia, commonly known as a hiccup, always shows up when you least expect him and stays longer than you want. A girl named Burlice from Ugala, Nebraska, ate an ice cream cone while running backwards in order to confuse her hiccups into shutting up, but it didn't work, so she drank a glass of seltzer water while standing on her head. That didn't work either, but she burped the flavor of strawberry. Okay. Bernice found that very interesting and now drinks seltzer water while standing on her head, even when she doesn't have the hiccups. What's going on here? I feel like I don't know where I am anymore after reading these lab reports. Ah, uh, choosiosis, commonly known as a sneeze. Studies have shown that if someone near you sneezes, the best way to keep ah, uh, ah, uh, choosiosis away is to pinch your nose and say, out of here, sneeze germ, or I'll blow you into the next week. Of course, if you want to sneeze, Dr. Von Flem suggests you take a deep breath through your nose, shout, hotcha, hotcha, and grab onto something sturdy. What the hell's going on? I'm going insane reading these lab reports. These are... Oh my god. Okay, the next one. Yoga yogi-itis, uh, commonly known as a yawn. Perhaps the best known case of yoga yogi-itis is that of Mr. Wilbur Tonghead of Wishbone, Wyoming. Mr. Tonghead's mouth is permanently open wide as a result of a particularly vicious yawn germ he suffered while hiccuping at last year's 4th of July barbecue. Mr. Tonghead now lectures students on what to do when the doctor tells you to say, ah, uh -huh. Ah, I don't like reading these. So haka haka cilii, commonly known as a cough. Um, cough medicines get rid of a cough germ by flushing the little bugger down your stomach where because of his extreme stupidity, he never finds his way out. He just rolls over and gurgles. The other way to get rid of a persistent cough, according to Dr. Hacker, is to introduce it to ah uh, ah uh, choosiosis, uh, the intelligent sneeze germ who dislikes coughs. Um, I tried it on myself says Dr. Hacker. For a time, I did nothing but cough and sneeze, sneeze and cough. Finally, the cough left. Now, I can't stop sneezing. Bubble bubble-itis, commonly known as a burp. Recent studies by the International League of Gases have shown that gulping down large quantities of air may lead to what scientists call a belching frenzy. Then, if uh, there are also giggled germs about, things are sure to get worse. Mr. Fiffle was so embarrassed that he ran away to live in the mountains. Legend has it that out in the country, when the moon is full, you can still hear the echo of a burp and the sound of tiny giggles at night. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, these germ lab reports. Uchi Achi Tickle Orum. Daryl Dipper of Dover, Delaware. Wow, I love all the alliteration in these. I had noticed that. Um, infected with an itch germ on his right elbow, once scratched right through a blue ski jacket, a green wool sweater with brown reindeer on it, a red and black plaid jumper, a lumberjack shirt. Uh, my parents went to Hawaii and all they bought me was this lousy t-shirt, t-shirt, and a flesh colored band-aid before realizing the itch had scurried down it, uh, to tickle his left foot. What happened to Daryl's sneakers is too horrible to describe. Okay, the next one. I actually don't need these glasses to read, but like my camera really far away keeps shutting off for some reason. So I just have to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't shut off while I'm reading. Um, the next one is a winky blinky eye goopiola, commonly known as eyeball goo. Um, Rip Van Winkle had the worst case of Winky Blinky Goopiola infection on record. After a 20 year snooze, Okay, that's very concerning. Uh, after a 20 year snooze, he woke up to discover his eyes glued shut with the gunk dust of 82 generations of eyeball goo germs. Fortunately, Mrs. Van Winkle was watering her petunias when Rip stumbled home and she hosed him in the face. When Rip's eyes opened, he saw the ugly Mrs. Van Winkle. He remembered why he'd slept 
so long and dozed right off again. Some of these are very rude, some of these are very crude, and not very scientific, and that one was very rude. Poor Mrs. Winkle, that's so sad. Oh, I got this guy in my stomach right now because I'm not feeling too good. Um, Grumpy Rumbolosis, commonly known as a tummy ache. The longest tummy ache on record belongs to a Mrs. Flubdub of Snowy Nose, Vermont, who loves sardines dipped in raw egg yolks. One New Year's Eve, Mrs. Flubdub gulped down 47 of the dripping little fish and was just about to yell, Happy New Year, when an army of grumble rumbleosis germs began nibbling away at her tummy. <gasps> That's horrible! Now the townsfolk of Snowy Nose turn out every April 19th, 19th for the Flubdub Parade commemorating the day Mrs. Flubdub finally stopped moaning? This is so vulgar and shocking. So she had a crazy tummy ache and these germs made a hole through her stomach because they were eating her stomach alive. And now the townsfolk made a parade to commemorate the day she died a horrible death? Germs, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with this toy line? Man, this is just getting weirder and weirder as we dive into this toy line. Giggity, giggity-itis. Ooh, seems like a sexy germ. Oh, it's uh, commonly known as a giggle. Okay, okay. Davy Dindle, uh, the laughing boy of Minnehaha country, was an outlaw among men, shunned by serious folk. <laughs> serious folk. I feel like I got this giggity, giggity-itis right now reading all these things. It was his fingers that got him in trouble. <laughs> Said his old dad, Big Dave. <laughs> his old his dad said that? His fingers got in trouble? Them digits was plumb dangerous to grumps and crouches alike. Seems Davy's fingers were covered with giggity giggity itis and germs. And he was forced to tickle every grumpy person he met. And with a hi ho hardy har har, he left them giggling as he rode off into the sunset. As legend has it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'm, I'm actually kind of sad now that these are over. I kind of enjoyed reading these. Any outie itis, commonly known as belly button lint. <laughs> um, scientists emphasize the importance of removing belly button lint. A Mr. Bumberry <laughs> from Manhattan, Montana, once went an entire month without cleaning his belly button. He woke one morning to find a belly button lint nest so big and heavy he could barely get out of his bed. Oh, that's alarming. Fortunately, he was able to move near an interstate highway where he changed his name to the Bumberry Hotel and now happily rents rooms and his belly button lint hotel to passing motorists for $12 a night. <laughs> I did not make this up. You know, this was like a roller coaster. It was like getting weird, it was getting funny, and then it was getting vulgar. It, it was really good. I feel like I have some of that giggity giggity itis. So as boring as you think these toys are that don't really do anything but just sit there, um, I do actually find this line quite fascinating. And they do remind me of those, you know, those aqua pets in 2003 or those giant microbe plushies that you've probably seen every now and then in, in some stores. Personally to me, you know, someone with a science background, someone that absolutely loves science, I love old medical instruments, test tubes, wet specimens, etc, etc. So this line of, you know, jumbo sized uh, little microbes and they're super colorful in these test tubes, actually really, really appealing to me. And you don't necessarily have to have a science background to think that these are actually really cool looking. Um, so definitely a really, really cool display piece for a collector for sure. I think it would have been really cool if they actually came up with a line based on, you know, real bacteria, real viruses, you know, and um, it was kind of more educational purposes and the lab reports could actually offer, you know, some insight to those microbes and it could actually be an educational tool for kids. I think that would have been really interesting. Um, but to also spice these up, it would have been nice if they had maybe a sound feature. I don't know, like these, like for example, like the hiccup guy could be like, hiccup, hiccup. Or, you know, if these were completely sealed and you couldn't actually open it and they were suspended in water, I think that would have been a fun feature as well. I think they could have maybe done a little bit more to jazz this lineup to make it a little more appealing to kids. During my research, I found that these two germs were never made. Not too sure what these germs were supposed to be, but I really like the one on the left. Um, this was concept art from the original toy pitch of the germs line. And this was shared on Flickr by the user 
Astronet. And newsflash, a company actually brought this germ concept back to life a few years ago. This line called Microboss! Microboss! Che fai? Osservi i microbi? Non sono micro. Copri gli speciali, cambia colore e che si illuminano al buio! La collezione di virus spara i batteri più divertente che ci sia! Sono contagiosi! It looks like these microbosses uh, stretch, they change color with temperature, and they glow in the dark. Not too sure uh, where these are sold or what language this is, so if anyone can enlighten me on the country of origin, that would be sweet! A sealed germ in its blister pack averages about $50 US plus shipping online on eBay, and just a loose germ in its test tube can range anywhere from $10 to $40 um, if it has its lab report included. So I was able to snag this entire lot of germs for about $200 US, and that included the entire collection of germs. Also an example of a little card back here, so it's cool to have all the art on the back, an example of each of the figures you can get in the line, and as well, all of those amazing lab reports, because you know, these things are you know a little flimsy, people toss them around, they get lost and everything. So I think $200 US was like a fantastic deal. So in the comments down below, I'd love to know if you guys had any of these germs growing up. Well, what we're talking about, of course you had germs growing up, all these little stinky, snotty kids, but like sweaty, stinky, wiggy, bumpy, any uchi kuchi osis. And is this something that you find appealing as a collector right now? Because I feel like a lot of collectors out there, if you don't know about this line, you're definitely gonna want to get this line because it's really fun to collect because you know there's 12 of them and they just display, they display so nicely. Every, oh, oh! We almost shattered the test tube and then we would have truly known the power of the germs test tube and why it would top the list of the most dangerous toys. And also down below, let me know of some of your favorite weird, unique, and kind of gross lines of toys that you guys like to collect when you were younger or even collecting right now as an adult collector because I'm always on the, shh, I'm always on the lookout for new toy lines to collect that are super weird like this. So let me know of any suggestions down below. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come up with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you all so much for watching and stay legendary. Thank you.